Okay, so this was pretty much my first reaction when I saw the new mechs. I was going to look at my stats and then I click on there's this thing and then I see uh, Oh hey, would you look at that? Silver War Max. Oh, what's this? This looks like the Mad Cat. I literally thought this was the Mad Cat 3, but in the fact, it's the Mad Cat 2. It's the Mad Cat 2, it's the Uzil's Denial. Yes! Woo! Okay, I'm done. Uh, so yeah. Uh, new Max to be released. Uh, all of them are clan except for the Annihilator. Uh, if we go to the Mech Warrior website again, we'll talk about the weapons first before we talk about the mechs and what they're able to do. That will be a whole lot easier. Now, uh, I have a bit for the a bit of a cold. So, uh, it's just the sniffling. Mm. So, for IS, we get new, uh, new weaponry. First of all, LBs. Pretty nice, but, um, L clan LBs are already not that good. <laughs> Except for like if you need a sword and board build, like a total blunderbuss build, but it's welcome. Ultra tens and ultra twenties and ultra twos for IS. Now the ultra twos will will be hilarious. I'm looking forward to that actually. Yeah, small ER mediums, which will synergize very well with the weapon we're about to talk about next, which is not streaks, streak fours and streak sixes. Please no fuck. It is it's already really hard to run a light mag. Stop with the streaks. And here we have the light and heavy gauss. Now the heavy gauss will most definitely synergize really well with ER mediums. ER mediums, all they have is extended range over standard medium lasers, but they produce two more heat per, per laser. So what actually you can do with the IS heavy gauss is like on a Warhammer 6R for example, you to put six ER mediums and a heavy gauss. And I think the optimum range should be about 350 meters, 300 or maybe 400 meters. I'm not too sure, I have to check uh, the SANA website. But heavy gauss will be really useful. Instead of like binning two Gauss rifles, you just pick one heavy Gauss and it does la five less damage than do Gauss. The range is significantly less though, but still, this is gonna be a really good mid range weapon. Now, for light Gauss, I'm not sure what the purpose of light Gauss would be. Besides putting dew Gauss on like a blackjack or something, which would be hilarious. But, um, I'm not too sure actually what you wanna do with light Gauss. We'll see how it goes. Uh, light machine guns. Why would you wanna bring a light machine gun? Longer range, sure, but deals less damage. I mean, machi standard machine guns already deal very little damage in, the, uh, in themselves. So, heavy machine guns will be absolutely hilarious. And I can hear all the people crying about the Spider 5K all over again. MRMs. Um, I'm not sure what to think about this weapon. It's medium range, unguided, low damage. That means that one missile does one damage. Um, because it's medium range, and if you want to balance them between LRMs and SRMs, the velocity will have to be very slow in comparison to SRM, so we have to see how this goes, whether MRMs will be useful or not. But hopefully, well, I'm, I'm putting too much hope in PGI, but hopefully they balance this weapon well, because it would be absolutely hilarious to have an MRMs. Uh, rocket launcher 10s, 15 and 20s. Now these are basically one-time use SRMs. Uh, one shot is launches fire undirected low damage rockets. I think it's one damage per rocket, so it's like 10, 15, 20 damage. This will be really useful for light mags, but I think it's more useful for tabletop because tabletop uh, they were le there's less armor and so yeah. But these are fairly lightweight and if you need to do a big heavy punch in a mech, I think the rocket launcher would be fine. Light PPCs and heavy PPCs. Now, heavy PPCs deal 15 damage for 15 heat, but I think they have less range? They have slightly less range, or they might have the same range as standard PPCs, not too sure, I haven't looked up SANA yet uh, for the PPCs. So the light PPC is basically a standard PPC that does less damage, I think it does 8 or 7 damage, but it uses less heat and it's less tonnage. The heavy PPC is 1 ton heavier, if I remember correctly, that does 15 heat, 15 damage, I'm not sure about the range, the range might be more than the standard PPC or might be less. Snub nose PPC would be really interesting. Uh, if my calculations are correct, the Snapnose PPC might have a similar range to IS Large Pulses, which makes them fairly usable, especially with the uh, the weight savings they have. It would be like six, one ton less, uh, of course reduced range because it's a Snapnose. No medium range as well, which makes it fairly useful. Uh, I can think of a fair few mechs that can make use of the Snapnose PPC. Uh, you could possibly do two Snapnose PPCs and like one heavy DOS for all I know. I mean, but you need... Um, you need a standard engine to use uh, heavy doors, and it needs to be toss mounted. So, yeah. 
Well, we have to see when these weapons come out. A lot of these things right now we can only base off Sana, and Sana is not directly indicative of how the game works. So some of the things might be changed. Light fusion engines, now this is one of the biggest changes in the game right now. Light fusion engines will make so many mechs, IS mechs really viable. Like the Cyclops for example, you want to put a large engine in it because of the large engine cap, but you want to put a standard engine in it because you want it to be survivable. Now you put the LFE in it, you hit the best of both worlds because it operates like a Clan XL, except that it is lighter than a standard, but heavier than an XL. So it's in between, it's directly in between the weight, uh, the weight savings of an XL from a, uh, from a standard. Now, where do I see this being used on? A lot of en standard engine mechs, Hunchback for example. Uh, I know having the head laser to zombie is nice, but having the increased speed and possibly increased weaponry given to you by light fusion engines would be really good. Um, what else do we have? Uh, King Crab. The King Crab would definitely be able to make use of this engine, because if it's stripped, if a King Crab is stripped, it, you may as well be dead. And Atlas, probably a DDC would be able to use this, but the Atlas S would run out of slots and won't be able to use the light uh, LFE actually. Uh, if you build the Atlas S the way I do, you have no slots left with Endo Steel in the standard engine. Uh, what are the mechs? The Victor might possibly benefit from this, but you might have to sacrifice some weaponry and some wep uh, armor and equipment to be able to fit the LFE. I'm not too sure whether I want to do that or not. The Orion would definitely be. Ooh. Oh yeah, the Orion would definitely be able to make use of this. Ooh. Yeah, and a lot of other standard engine mechs which you want to make survivable and don't really need the tonnage. Well. You wanna make go Well, it's the tonnage savings, yeah. So LFE would be the I think it would be the biggest game changer out of all of these things here. Now of course to complement the light fusion engine we have light ferro fibers. Now light <coughs> excuse me. Light ferro fibers armor would be extremely useful if you have like a mech that uses endo steel for example, but doesn't have enough slots for ferro, but still has say maybe seven uh seven critical slots left. Now, Light Ferro Fibers is a heavy version of Ferro Fibers, but it takes up half the amount of slots, only 7. Which means that, like for example, you have your... <coughs> mm, excuse me, I do have a bit of a flu, so forgive me for that. Um, say you have your Laser Vomit Grasshopper. You fill it, it's filled up to the brim with heat sinks, but you still have 7 slots left somehow. Just hear me out here. You'll be able to put Light Ferro Fibers and maybe like possibly squeeze in more armor, a slightly bigger engine, stuff like that, so it's gonna be fairly useful, I'm a fan of this. Stealth Armor is... Well, the way that Stealth, uh, stealth Armor works is that it prevents you from getting locked on completely when you're when it's paired up with ECM. Now, the way the current ECM works is that you can't be locked on at all unless you're within a certain minimum range, like around uh, 180 meters or something, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, I'm not sure how useful this will be, but this will mean that um, your stealth armor, right? If you have like a Raven 3L with stealth armor and ECM, you will be completely undetectable. Streaks will not be able to lock onto you. I think maybe un unless they have a tag or a BAP. No, no. Stealth armor is... Oh. No, a Beagle Active Probe does not count as stealth armor plus ECM. I think it's the Bloodhound Active Probe, which we don't have in the game. Uh, it's up to PGI to um, decide how it will work and all. But that means that, like, probably Streak Max won't be able to target you unless they have a tag or they knock you. Well, we'll have to see how this works. I'm not sure if it's worth it or not, because it takes up 12 to kill slots, but it's the same weight as standard armor. Hmm, uh, I don't really know what to think of stealth armor. Anyway, moving on to targeting computers. Um, if they operate the same way as clan, I'm not sure about their tonnage values and slot, uh, slot values, but if they take up if they provide the same benefits as clan max, they will actually be fairly useful. Laser AMS will be... Laser AMS is actually pretty good, considering that um, a lot of the downsides of being an AMS was that the amount of ammo you had... To, uh, the amount of tonnage you had to sacrifice for ammo. And I think laser AMS is like a ton each instead of like half a ton of the standard AMS. So you can bring 3 tons of equipment, and you don't need to bring like 3 tons of ammo for example to compensate with the AMS. And it, Works with AMS overload. Now the trade-off, obviously, being that it generates heat while it's using, uh, while it's firing. It's uh, the laser AMS actually functions by having a small pulse laser attached to the thing that just shoots down lasers. I mean, shoots down missiles. 
this would not exactly be game baiting, but it'd be pretty interesting. It might encourage more usage of your AMS, cause having to sacrifice quite a fair bit of tonnage for AMS ammo, and then eventually running it out, especially if you're on Polar Highlands, did god fuck that map. Um, this would be pretty useful. Now onward to clan technology, same shit, light and heavy machine guns, so that'd be very useful for max like the Viper, the Shadow Cat. <coughs> Excuse me, the Nova actually will benefit from this as well. The heavy machine guns. Got a fair few other mechs as well. We'll see how it goes. Now we have ER yeah, micro lasers. Now the difference between micro lasers and small lasers is that uh, besides the size, eh, eh, um, it's a one slot laser that is a quarter ton. So it's 0 0.25 tons, which is half the weight of a normal small laser. And I think the micro pulse laser is like uh, half a ton. I'm not too sure. But this would be fairly useful if you want to like laser boat to oblivion but still want to have a lot of heat sinks. I'm not sure how the range on them will be. We have to see how it goes. Uh, I haven't checked Sana for micro lasers yet because I was never really interested in them. This might be good actually for the uh, for the Arctic Cheetah because six small pulse lasers is actually fairly hot and if you put like six micro pulse lasers you'll be able to put more heat sinks. The range will be significantly reduced though. We have to see what they do with the range. If the range is like really low then there'll be a bit of an issue. Anyways, moving on to the heavy lasers. Heavy lasers are a family of lasers that do high damage at the cost of higher heat and less range. This is potentially game rating as well because I know in Mech Warrior 4 that heavy lasers were very, very powerful. And I think even in, uh, let me lean back my chair here, in Mech Warrior Living Legends, heavy lasers were also pretty fucking powerful. So on mechs, they are able to afford the heat expenditure, maybe like a... Uh, Say instead of doing the two large pulse for medium laser timber wolf, you instead do a six heavy medium laser timber wolf. It does more damage. I think it might even produce more heat, but it has shorter ranges. I, you have to see how it goes, honestly. Um, what the applications of this will be like? What mech will be able to d use this heavy laser effectively without getting gimped by clan heat? Because the reason why the laser vomit thing uh, was so the laser vomit clan meta was so prominent was that it had good alpha and it had good range, but the heat was obviously horrendous, and that was the reason why um you use large pulses and medium because the range was pretty good. You wouldn't use medium pulses because you had to be hundred meters closer. Light tag, weighs less. Half ton tag that has less range. Self explanatory. Will this change much? It might encourage people being tag a bit more. I'm not too sure about that. ATMs, advanced tactical missiles, or a missile whose damage will be will vary based on the distance it travels. The higher, high damage up close, lower damage at long range. Now I'm not sure how ATMs were in the other Mech Warrior games, but and I'm not sure about the tonnage as well. Actually, let me just check the tonnage. Um, one moment. Sana ATM. Um, okay, so we're looking at the ATM-9, which is the higher end spectrum of the ATM. Produces 6 heat, and it's 5 tons. Oh! And it does 3 damage per missile. So ATM-9 can do 20... Wow! Wow! Huh! The ATM will be really good then. Maybe I could put like... Depending... Oh, I didn't check the heat. Shit. <coughs> so it's 6 heat. And it weighs 5 tons. <coughs> Excuse me, um, yeah, I'm not that healthy at the moment. So I could put like 4 ATM 9s or something in a Timberwolf. Ooh! Ooh! ATM Mad Dog, thinking! Oh god, I might actually need to rebuild my Mad Dog at this bit with ATMs. Ooh! Probably ATM 6s though, because they will be. Uh, more in tune with the uh... Well, we, ha we have to look at the fire rate as well Because Sana will not tell us anything about the fire rate because As all the fire rate in this game is Totally based on PGI values And uh, because you only get, get to fire a weapon once per turn unless it's a UAC or a Rotary can Actually, uh, did I skip over the Rotary cannons? Yes I did um, They were the AC2 and AC5 Genuinely unsure how they will work because I've never, I never really played the other uh, Mac Warrior games, but from the description, it's a extremely rapid firing auto cannon with ro uh, rotating barrels. They can have a jam chart. They can jam if they fire too long. 
The spinning barrels will likely have a ramp up time, so pretty much like gloss rifles where you have to charge them up. And then before they start firing, and a ramp down time before they stop. We have to see them in game to actually know how they will work. Because a lot of the weapons that are in MechWarrior Online function quite a fair bit differently from the other MechWarrior games. This is all, the, uh, this is what I've been told for other people who have played the other MechWarrior games. Like the, like Active Pro, like uh, probably, I think it's a half ton BAP, which has lesser range. I don't know how useful they will, this will be, but um, eh, eh. and clearly is the AMS. So, wow, this is a 15 minute video already, shit. So those are my, I'm gonna release this as one video, my thoughts on the new weapons, and after that I release my thoughts on the new mechs, uh, probably later on today. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, it was just mostly me, just me just talking, giving my thoughts about how the weapons can change the meta and stuff like that. Hope you all enjoyed the video, I once again didn't script it, that's why I completely forgot about the rotary cannons. And uh, yeah, uh, look forward to the video about the new Max, uh, the new newly amount announced Max soon. I'll catch you all later. Don't forget to leave a comment about what you think about all the new weapons released. What would you have liked to see instead of the weapons listed here? I personally would have liked to see PPC capacitors for IS for higher pinpoint PPCs. Uh, but hey, just leave a comment what you would like to see, and leave a like if you like the video, dislike the video if you disliked it, and. Yeah, uh, look forward to the next video. I'm repeating myself now, so I'm gonna stop. Bye-bye.